back to another YouTube video. Um, sorry, it's been a while since I last posted. Uh, just been busy with a lot of things, honestly. I'm a little sick right now. Uh, I know it's a bad time to make my comeback YouTube videos. You know, it's been a while and I come back and I'm sick, right? But this video, I want to talk about like things, five things to be exact, five things uh, you should look out for when it comes to buying a 340i, 440i, anything with a 58 um, when I'm usually on social media, if you guys don't follow me, by the way, hit me up on my Instagram right here if you guys have any questions. But basically, long story short, I get lots of DMs all the time on the daily of things that they should look out for when it comes to buying a 340i or what what is better, this or that. On this video, I'm going to talk about the five things I always look out for and the five things that I like about them. All right. So it could be like a two two for one combo kind of situation so top five things to look out for and top five things i like about the b58 slash 340 slash 440 any other bmw equipped with the b58 so yeah So since we're driving right now, first top five things you should look out for, right? So number one on my list, right, is the overall ownership of the history of the vehicle. Um, just like any other car, you know, you want to make sure that the car has been taken care of, right? Um, it's, and at the end of the day, it is a BMW. Um, it's not like a normal Japanese car where you can literally unplug like an O2 sensor and a car will just start up just fine. Um, with BMWs, they're very heavy on electrical or wiring or computer systems and all that stuff so literally there been times where i brake boost too hard my car would get a check engine light because i'm pressing a brake and a gas at the same time too hard so that's kind of like a weird thing it's a safety thing obviously but it's just that kind of thing you want to keep in mind when when it comes to the sensitivity of bmws when it comes to like check engine lights or maintenance and stuff like that so make sure the ownership is good i don't know if you guys can tell but i have 117,000 miles on this car it's running a big boost gtx 1000 uh it's a 67 62 millimeters uh turbo kit running pi 1050 injectors um stock motor stock trans unopened motor no nothing um this is my second transmission i blew it up already um as expected but i decided to go with this, another stock one i don't know why i kind of messed up on that but we'll go into that in a little video but mileage is a thing that you shouldn't really have to worry about when it comes to b58s um it's been proven um on forums and stuff like that that b58s are capable of going over 200,000 miles if that's one thing that you want to worry about and when it comes to can it last me up to 200,000 miles can it last me up to 300k miles um there's a couple people on facebook group chats or um forums and stuff like that where they have they're running close to 300k miles on her car and the only major issue that they encountered was they needed a new water pump which is always you know like any other car it's known to go out you know just from wear and tear um some people say they just needed a new alternator and new this so maintenance stuff perfectly fine and they're running like upgraded turbos and everything just like me so for the second one is obviously when it comes to maintenance right so make sure that the maintenance is cool so these cars do like to do maintenance uh, make sure oil changes are up to date if there's no proof um if there's no proof of oil changes like for example some cars there's no proof that they were brought into a dealership and there's no ra service record um and if your gut is telling you that the car is good condition i would recommend still getting a vehicle the car but do maintenance as soon as you get it the first thing you should do um even if the uh, new or the previous owner is saying they just recently changed the oil i don't care i'm changing the oil as soon as i bring it home uh new spark plugs new coil packs it's kind of like that peace of mind you know what i mean that the car is all refreshed and everything number three um these cars are notorious for burning coolant right and it's not necessarily from what you think it, it's not burning coolant from the, the motor internally uh not through the head gasket it's not a subaru or anything like that um they're actually burning coolant through the reservoir 
Um, it's a really bad design from BMW. It's also made of plastic, so over time the plastic um, def gets deformed a little bit from heat cycles, and it doesn't cause a proper seal. So the overflow tank the, for the reservoir um, coolant just slowly evaporates, and every three five thousand miles, I like to check mine, make sure it goes. Uh, you know, I fill it up. Um, it doesn't go down like crazy, but you can tell that it's like losing coolant some way somehow, and it's from there one hundred percent of the time. Um, if you're certain that it's not from there, uh, the second location where car this car likes to lose coolant is through the oil filter housing gasket. So that's what this thing is known for. Uh, is the oil filter housing gasket when it comes to higher miles cars mainly because the oil filter housing is made of plastic and obviously from constant heat cycles the plastic just gets warped and the gasket doesn't seal properly and your car just starts leaking cool it um, through that area so make sure that um, if your car is past 100k miles that you're trying to buy make sure that the oil filter housing has either been serviced before or put that on your list as the, one of the first things you, you should do when it comes to buying the vehicle and I think we're on four. Yeah, number three is oil, fil oil filter housing gasket is one thing you should look out for. And number four is transmission. A lot of people think that this transmission can hold a lot of power, which it can to an extent, right? So with what happens is with the stock ZF8 transmission, it can. Uh, a lot of people have been you know getting away with having a big single turbo making like 800 wheel on a stock trans, where the torque is really brought down like a lot by the tuner. Um, torque is what blows everything up, right? It blows the motor up, it blows the transmission up. Um, I actually blew my transmission up running a hybrid turbo, mainly because the hybrid turbos often make more torque down low. So when you get on a car, it moves really good and it feels really quick, um, but it's a lot of stress on a transmission. So make sure that the transmission has been serviced. Um, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to change the transmission fluid and change the pan and all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about when it comes to like how to do it or anything like that. Um, just make sure that that's all up to date. Uh, and XHP plays a big role when it comes to keeping the longevity of your transmission. Uh, XHP is a really good uh, tuning software that you can do to tune the transmission and make it shift faster. Uh, it makes it shift at a better shifting point so it doesn't necessarily ride the clutches if that makes any sense. Um, and overall it makes it last longer. So that's the number one thing. So make sure the transmission fluid has been done. Lastly, but not least, um, just overall understand the motor. Um, these motors have been capable of lasting a long time. Um, that's the reason why they're on Toyota, you know, Supras and all that stuff. Um, just make sure the valve cover gasket is not leaking. Um, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world if it was leaking, but just make sure you get that done. Uh, for example, my car, it's 117,000 miles on a dash, but I'm still running the OEM valve cover gasket. Um, it hasn't been leaking on me yet. Um, the only thing that went out on my car, motor-wise, is the oil pan gasket. So I had to reseal the oil pan up, um, take it take it out, reseal it, or take the old seal out, put a new gasket in, and close it back up. So I had to get that done. But other than that, the car's been solid, no issues, right? So that's pretty much the top five things that I would look out for when it comes to purchasing your first B58, any other car. Um, these cars are really good cars, guys. Um, it's really good bang for your buck, especially how nowadays, I believe they're going for around 25K for decent mileage. Um, <coughs> just for reference, I bought my car with, I believe it had like 70 some thousand miles, like 71 or 68,000, around there, high 60s, low 70s. And I bought it for about 28, I'm gonna say, I don't really remember. Um, I don't owe anything on the car, not a flex or anything, but you know, I had $28,000, so I was like, why not just cash it out? So uh, that's pretty much what the price points are going. So they're really cheap and it's really easy to make power, right? So now let's move on to our next topic, uh, top five things I like about the car. All right, so we're gonna get started with the, obviously, reliability. Um, B58s, like I said on the first topic, B58s have been proven to last more than like 200,000 miles. So you don't gotta worry about that. Um, but I can say with proof that it's true. Um, I'm literally a living proof. I like to tell my friends who are afraid of BMWs that my car has 100K miles and I beat the living crap out of this car almost every day. Um, I go out racing all the time. I just do pulls for no reason. Uh, and a car never skips a beat. And I have all of my seats in. It's a comfortable car. I have AC running and everything like that. Um, I have AC running, no issues. I can I have Harman Kardon speakers, so like the car bumps music. So that's like one of the cool things that I like about this car is reliability is for sure there. So worry about 
reliability guys okay i can't stress it enough um all these people that you see and they're blowing their motors up and stuff like that most likely is because of a failure of something unrelated of the engineering of the bmw right i've known some people where they blew up their engine mainly because they had a billet manifold and the uh, aftermarket manifold failed the welds failed and coolant got into the ports and boom coolant got into the uh, pistons and fried the pistons up right so things like that can happen it's a, it's a tough game we all don't like uh facing but it, it can happen right but if you take care of it like for example for me i do my oil changes every two three k miles right um i change my spark plugs every 10k miles um depending if i'm having any issues according to my data logs um, for my tuner but i've changed them maybe like three or four times already out of my ownership of owning this car and it's i've only owned this car for like a year and a half or two i'm gonna say two years um and and the serpentine bell or o2 sensor all that basic stuff right so that's one thing that i like about it is reliability number two um it's it, you can make it really fast for almost like nothing for dirt cheap uh for this car they from factory they say they only make like 330 horsepower from factory or something like that but i've seen people put down pipes literally a metal pipe in the email tune um and it'll make roughly like 400 something horsepower like 410 420 430 or you know around that horsepower range but where it, it makes it really fun is a torque it usually always makes a hundred more torque than horsepower um b58s are diesel blocks so of course we're going to be making a lot of torque um just like a diesel so when you're pulling or racing or anything or doing a pull on your car the car feels really quick because it's making so much torque so just keep that in mind um number three it's the overall looks i mean i don't know i'm gonna put a picture of my car right here um that's my car it's been through so many phases it's been green before it's purple now as you guys can see um I ha i'll do a quick walk around of the vehicle um in another video but basically that's what i like about it it's just it looks nice man like it's don't get me wrong an f80 m3 is way better because of the arches in the back and it's wide bodied and everything but if you're not i never really like to compare this car to an m3 i feel like m3 and this car are two different completely like the two different cars you know like yeah sure they're both the three series but i feel like bmw back in 2016 when they made this car they wanted a family car but they found out that the motor actually makes a lot of power so yeah so makes a lot of power for dirt cheap um you can buy a car for p for 20 bands or so and then put like five thousand um, dollars on it and you're making well over close to six seven hundred horsepower to the wheels with four doors or coupe if you're, you have a coupe it's only two doors um and it's comfortable or anything like that number three is the zf transmission uh, i don't know if you guys know but the zf transmission comes from the hellcat as well uh, so but they have the hp 70 or 80 i believe or i'm not really sure a while we have the only we only have the hp 50 but this zf transmission when tuned is i'm gonna get a lot of criticism for this but i like it more than a dct the main reason why is because a lot of people who are stuck with saying the dct is way better yes back then it was way better ever since the zf trans uh, mission came out with the new trans tune i can definitely say it ships faster than dct i've raced 335 is's and i've out shifted them like crazy um and overall it's you know it's really comfortable it's not clunky it's eight speed so um we're driving the freeways nice and all that stuff um and they're cheap if you blow them up i bought a new transmission for a thousand dollars you know like they're pretty they're out there they're everywhere and you can tune them and also nowadays you can build them and they're going to be a lot faster and stronger than a dct i feel like a dct is old technology you know it, it works and it's great and when it was in its prime it wasn't doing good right but you know just like any other athlete out there there's their prime and then there's their downfall right into a new athlete he's on a rise the zf transmission is a new athlete so hate me or not but that's just my opinion after driving a dct um and uh, a dct bmw dct a gtr dct uh, or, and a zf transmission of this car i just prefer the zf transmission it's more comfortable more dailyable and you can shift really quick and it makes just holds just as much power i believe they're it's rated to make like 600 torque before it starts to really slip um but honestly if you're not doing digs or anything like that the car would just be just fine you know i only do roll racing and i like to change my transmission fluid once in a while or i, I know my my temps on a transmission so i like to keep it below a certain temp because i know that the clutches won't slip so that's that so i like the transmission i believe i'm on number four number four is the overall community i feel like the b50 community is getting bigger and bigger and a lot of people are hopping in which is a great thing in my opinion because that means that with the bigger community there's going to be a lot more companies out there willing to make aftermarket parts for it there are there's so many aftermarket parts 
being built or released for this platform and it's still in the making so it's still relatively a new platform i think the first bbp b58 did come out till 2015 2016 around there so it just you know it's a good it's a good platform to join it's really easy bang for a buck um it's a matter of trying to be faster than any other b58 that's kind of like your own thing you know um and lastly number five is how easy it is to work on oh my goodness compared to an m54 s55 or any other s66 x uh, s65 um b58 is by far the easiest car to work on um i can do, literally do a downpipe install in five ten minutes i can literally do a turbo kit install and not have to pull the motor out or raise it up or drop the subframe unlike an s55 or m54 where you have to like use that oh fancy tool that goes across the hood God. and to raise the motor up no you don't got to do any of that you can literally change your turbo kit on the ground like i when i changed my bottom out big boost single turbo kit with running a garrett turbo um i was able to literally install the turbo kit when it was just on the floor like no, nothing crazy um spark plugs are really easy accessible nothing you don't you don't got to reroute anything i know for a fact my m54 boys out there i know you guys have to reroute uh, your coolant reservoir i believe to the other side if you're running top mount um this is perfect super open engine bay or anything like that so i just love working on it at home super easy to work on i can literally do everything everything is in arm's reach and yeah so pretty much that's it that's all i can say for now that's all i got in my mind um let me know if you guys have anything you want me to do uh again i'm so sorry if i sound kind of like goofy right now i'm a little sick i'm a little stuffed but i felt like me on my way to get a haircut is a great time to kind of make a little quick video of my opinion after owning a b58 for two years uh, my top five things i like about the car and top five things you should look out for when it comes to buying one of these joints so as always i'll see you guys next time um hopefully i'll be making more of these kind of videos a lot sooner or not sooner more um mainly because it's it's, it's hard man honestly with juggling life and work and and other all, all that kind of stuff it kind of you know putting in the youtube thing is not my full time obviously so I, but I do like to make content just for fun and just to kind of educate people so i'll try my best you know to make more videos but i appreciate you guys for sticking around um i'll see you guys next time i'll make a video of something else so again peace out later guys